Okay, let's talk about GMAT mathematics. And of course, uh, the GMAT, if you're watching uh, this video, I'm assuming you're going to be taking the GMAT, which basically means that you're going to be uh, applying to some sort of a graduate school, specifically business school, MBA program. So congratulations on that. Um, that's super exciting. So my background is I'm a math teacher, taught middle school all the way through uh, college. And I also have, well, I have a degree in mathematics and uh, I have a master's as well. So I know about going to graduate school. It was um, a great part of my life. I learned a lot, so um, more power to you. But before you get to that stage, you got to get through and pass your GMAT. You want to do as uh, well as you can, especially on the math section. So a couple things here. We're going to go over this practice problem um, in, a, in a moment. Uh, so for those of you out there, you likely have been away from math. Not all of you, but many of you, probably most of you have been away from math for some time. Now, even though you were maybe good at math, you still need to do quite a bit of review um, if you expect to do you know, outstanding on GMAT. So in this um, stage of your life or your point, this point in your career, you don't want to you know, skimp on anything. You just don't want to do anything halfway. So the math section, you know, you want to give yourself enough time and really immerse yourself. So if you're looking for a great program, uh, really super comprehensive from somebody who really knows how to teach math, uh, you can check out my program. I'll leave a link in the description. I have a, G, a GMAT math prep course, super comprehensive. So if you find that you like my teaching style, you can check out my course. But I recommend you getting into some sort of formal study routine. You know, you need, you need a lot of good material and you need time. All right, so with that being said, let's get into this particular uh, practice prom. So I'm, I'm just going to just like show you the prom. Uh, then I'm not even going to discuss it in terms of tell you what it is. Uh, of course, I will solve it here in just one uh, moment. So here we have some sort of equation. And I'd like you to solve this equation. All right, so if you think you know how to do it, I want to pause the video and, and do it real quick. Now. Let me just go ahead and just pause myself. Okay, so for those of you that are like not sure, but maybe you already paused the video or you're in a, and you're returning back to it, let's go ahead and solve this equation. So this is something that you know you should be able to do at this particular you know level for GMAT uh, mathematics. This is fundamental, you know, mid-level high school uh, math problem. Okay, so what we're dealing with here with is absolute value. So if you got that uh, correct, then that's good, right? So this is an absolute value equation. Okay, and I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent and turn this into a complete lesson on absolute value. This is, a, but I will say this much: absolute value, amongst a lot of other things, uh, a lot of many, many other math topics. You know, you need to know, right? You really need to know. So, anyways, let's take a simpler. Um, version of this problem and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll solve this okay so this is an absolute value equation let's, let's let's take a look at this equation absolute value of X is equal to 4 right so here right now I got all this stuff in here let's just kinda of disregard that for now and let's just think about this we have the absolute value of X is equal to 4 now X is just some variable right so in maths basically you can say this the absolute value of some number is equal to 4. Or maybe I pose this question to you this way. I say, hey, listen, uh, I have some number and its absolute value is 4. What is that number? Okay. So, or what numbers have the absolute value of 4? Let's just think of that for a second. So hopefully you said, well, 4 does. The absolute value of 4 is 4, and you're correct. However, absolute value equations always have two solutions okay the absolute value of negative 4 is also 4 okay so X is equal to 4 or negative 4 okay so this is the real basic fundamentals of how to solve um, an absolute value equation real quick absolute value is the distance a number is from 0 so in this case we're saying what number has what number is four units away from uh, zero? What number is four units away from zero? Well, four is, okay, four is four units away, 
and negative 4 is also 4 units away from 0. Okay, remember uh, distance is just kind of measure that in, in like positive displacement. All right, so if you're understanding this, then, uh, then we're kind of well on our way of being able to solve any absolute value equation. So let's go back to our original problem here. So all I know is this. The absolute value of whatever this is, okay, whatever this expression is inside of here is equal to 4. Well, this we already said, well, there's only two numbers such that when we take the absolute value of, of that number, of that value, it's going, our answer is going to be uh, 4, right? So 1 was 4, so whatever that is, the absolute value of whatever is going to be 4, and then the absolute value of whatever else that can, um, let me just do it this way, I don't want to confuse you. So let's do this. This number here, this value here, because I'm kind of teaching this, uh, uh, the mechanics. I want you to truly understand this. It'll, you know, hopefully you can remember this for any problem. This number here can either be four or negative four, right? Because when we take the absolute value of four, it's four, and we take the absolute value of negative four, it's four. So whatever we think this this value is in here, it has to be either equal to this or this in order for this part to be true. Okay. So again, the way I teach, you know, I'm, I'm trying to teach you, you know, how to comprehend really what's going on. Because if you remember this, you'll be able to, you know, do, you know, all these problems that understand uh, absolute value, you know, in its, uh, you know, true nature. Right? I could have just showed you the mechanic, the algebraic rote procedures, da 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 da, and you would have been okay. I get that problem, but that's a problem. Well, that's the big, big issue. Um, really downfall a lot of people learning any subject they just learn the the core steps they think it's a computer algorithm and then they don't remember it okay there's too many steps that get confused so it's not the way I teach math okay I try to teach math where you know hey you understand what's going on right so all right so now let's get to it so we know that two-thirds x two-thirds x minus one you're saying hey you have to be equal to either four or two thirds x minus one, you have to be equal to either negative four. So four or negative four, one or two of those values, two x minus one. I know that you're equal to uh, that you're going to end up being equal to either four or negative four. So when we solve these two equations, then we'll have our solutions. Remember, absolute value equations always have two solutions. So at this point in the video, if you're saying, "Oh, okay, now I understand this," so you know, you might want to pause the video and see if you can actually solve these two equations because that's going to be, a, you know, this is even more basic. These are basic equations. And if you're struggling with this stuff, don't don't freak out, you know, but you have to do something with this because this is a, you know, this is really fundamental kind of stuff for the GMAT, all right? But, um, you know, that's what we're going through with this particular problem. It's just going to give you a good indication of, uh, you know, your math skills and, you know, uh, general math skills at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll start with this one on the left. So two thirds uh, x minus one equals four. So I'm going to add one to both sides of the equation, and I get two thirds x is equal to five. Now to solve for x, okay, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by this reciprocal. Okay, I don't want to be teaching too many topics here because you know we're gonna I, I'm already I'm going off on some tangents and I don't want to make this video too long okay so so we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by uh, th the reciprocal of this coefficient here so I can clear this side so uh, three halves times two-thirds is gonna be one X or just X and that's what I'm looking to solve for right but whatever I do to this side of the equation I also have to do this side of the equation so 5 or 5 over 1 times 3 over 2, 3 halves, is going to be 15 over 2. And that's it. Now, just a little uh, comment. A lot of students sometimes think that they, they'll see this fraction and they want to turn it into a mixed number. They'll want to take 2, they divide it into 15. Do, do not do that. Don't turn this to a decimal. Just uh, reduce that fraction completely and you're done. So you should be able to recognize, like on a multiple choice type of question, your answers generally in algebra are going to be um, left as improper fractions. Okay, so anyway, so here we have 1 
uh, of our equation, but now we have to go ahead and do this one. So same idea, so we have 2 thirds x minus 1 equals negative 4, add 1 to both sides of the equation. So now I have 2 thirds x is equal to negative 3. Okay, got to be careful with these positive and negative numbers. So same deal here, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 halves. And so I'm going to get x is equal to negative 9 halves. Okay, so here are our two solutions for this absolute value equation. And this is a real basic kind of absolute value equation because I do want to kind of teach to it. Uh, you know, so remember when you're studying math, if you if you look at your you know what you're trying to do for the GMAT and you're just saying okay I gotta know all these math topics I'm just gonna memorize all the procedures and everything else and that's not a good approach okay I've been teaching math for a long long time there's a lot of things I'm not good in one of the things I'm extremely you know very very good in is teaching math why because you know I have a degree in it and I've been doing it for many many years so just like you you know we all have our areas of expertise so I'm telling you you want to learn from an expert I'm telling you that you want to try to learn the topic you know really truly learn the topic once master it and then you know obviously practice it but if you just go right to just trying to practice problems and hoping that you you know remember it you're, you're going to have uh, a high likelihood of con confusing yourself on 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 the GMAT. So let's go to finish this video up. Uh, listen, uh, if you like my teaching style, hopefully consider subscribing to my channel. I literally have hundreds of videos that are, that are you know at the level of mathematics for the GMAT. But if you're interested in checking out my GMAT uh, math prep course, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. You can check that out. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know how it's going for uh, you know the GMAT, your study program, what you're doing. You know, maybe you have some questions and whatnot. I'll try to answer. Um, it lets me, you know, your feedback it lets me know how I'm doing, and plus it gives me ideas for future videos. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your career and in graduate school. Uh, so thank you for your time, and have a great day.